What is going on everybody? It's Alice coming back at you with another video and today I'm going to be giving you guys a launch of a brand new series, Who to Watch. And we're going to be making our debut into just purely college, not just NFL draft material. Of course, there's going to be a lot of overlap. Why? Because guys play college football before they go to the NFL draft. Regardless, we're going to be adding new people. Haynes King in here, Quinn Ewers. So it's going to be really fun. So if you guys are new, feel free to stick around, like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun YouTube jazz. And down below, there's a lot more links for you guys to get involved. And we're going to be doing actually a fan mock draft in a couple of weeks, if not maybe a couple of months, depending on how like the season's starting out. So stay tuned for that. We're actually going to make it happen. I'm excited. So without further ado, let's kick off the video. Let's have a good time. So we are going to go this format. There is going to be, if I'm not mistaken, 18 players on this list. Yeah, so it, I'll probably put top 15 you guys know the deal. I always say top 10, top 15, I'll always give you more. I'll never give you guys less, but these are essentially, I look through every single game and I see players where it's like, you know what? I kind of want to watch them. There's plenty of more players than the ones that are just on here, of course. So feel free to mention those matchups down below. Quinn yours is going to have to face a hell of a defense. I can bring up Will Anderson. I can bring up Malachi Moore, Brian Branch in here, uh, Henry Teotio. Like you can bring up any of those dudes, Dallas Turner. There's a plethora of guys. So overall, I'm not really exactly sure who I'm really worried about the matchup, but Quinn yours needs to show it, man. He does. And he had some very risque throws to put it very politely in his first outing. So I'm excited to see him against a really powerful defense. And I hope he can take that step up because the kid has unbelievable talent. But again, it's a little bit worrisome. Siaki Ika is next. He's going up against BYU's offensive line. This dude is a freak of nature. The problem is, I don't think he's athletic enough to make consistent plays. Now, the question is, will BYU's extremely powerful offensive line be good enough to stop him? If he is absolutely dominant, we will raise him up the board. Again, that's a really good offensive line. So if you perform well against good talent, you deserve respect. And is if he's able to show that he can get past his athletic issues, I'm more than willing to put him all the way up on the list. Uh, Cam Smith. So they're going up against Arkansas, but a major guy I want to see him against is Jadon Hazelwood. I think that that physical presence is something that I really want to see him go one-on-one -on -one versus. I think he might be able to win that matchup, but I do personally think that's going to be a really cool matchup to watch this week. Peter Skaronsky is going against Duke Edges, though. Uh, obviously, if you guys don't know, he's number seven on my big board now. He's been balling out, so this time it doesn't say Syracuse. Don't know why the hell it said Syracuse the last time Peter Skaronsky was up there. Obviously, I know it's Northwestern, but, you know, Duke has provided quite a few very talented edge rushers, and I'm a little bit concerned about the speed that Duke can provide versus a guy who just put on 20 pounds in Peter Skaronsky. So we'll keep our eyes on that because that could be able to drop him significantly if he can't handle the speed now since he has the size. Next, we got Deuce Vaughn versus Missouri. Chris Abrams drains over there. You look at the linebackers, they have some good ones. Obviously, their defensive line is pretty damn solid too. So if he's able to maximize his size and maximize his ability, um, he could be a really big X factor. I think that could be the way that Kansas State can absolutely annihilate Missouri. But this is not the last time I bring up this game because Javon Foster, left tackle out of Missouri, is going up against Felix Anudike Uzama. So that's a big one. That's a big game right there because I have both these guys as third round picks. And if Felix continues to create unbelievable pressure and shows a little bit extra juice, he's rocketing up my board. Obviously, I think that's pretty fair to say. Javon Foster needs help with his pass protecting game, but he's a monster in the run game. So I'm very excited to see this matchup. This is a key one that I really want to see. So technically, if you guys really want to think about it, this isn't just like a top 15. Uh, I have Jadon Hazelwood versus Cam Smith. I have a double right there. Felix on DK Uzama versus Javon Foster. Like we added some dudes in here. I want to give you guys some good, some good stuff to watch. Uh, but then we got Keaton Slovis versus the Tennessee defense. Again, this is not in a particular order, but, you know, Keaton Slovis looked a little sluggish versus Western Virginia. So that kind of is like, eh. but 
he is, I think, good enough to make a bounce back. Head and Hooker could be tossed in here as well. Pittsburgh's defense is pretty damn solid. So you can kind of mention that. I guess you could say if Kalijah Kansi plays some reps outside, him versus Darnell Wright. But I think Darnell Wright is a little bit too good to be putting on this list. Now, Texas A&M, you'll be like, why the hell are you talking about their defensive backs? So I'm pretty sure Jalen Jones is coming back. He didn't play week one. But also you have Antonio Johnson there. Appalachian State, if you guys didn't watch, I think he, they put up like 42 points or something crazy, something maybe even higher than that versus UNC. So they have a high-powered offense. And UNC, they still have guys like Tony Grimes there that are very good players. So I do think this is not something that's that big of a have to watch, but we have seen App State have some very, very good offensive momentum against a very powerful team in D1. Haynes King. This dude needs to not throw interceptions against shit schools. And this one's not a shit school. Now, granted, you know, you look at, uh, I think, what's his name? It's like Dawson Hayes or something like that. Regardless, um, he's definitely going to be featured on a player to watch. He's going to be stock up. But RIP to the graphics here with Will McDonald, Xavier Hutchinson. Regardless, doesn't matter. Um, But, you know, obviously, Haynes King, he's starting for a team that has playoff potential. And if he can't play well against crap schools, he's not going to play well against good schools. And he didn't play that well against a crap school. Now it's going to be Appalachian State. Now it's going to be a much more difficult test. So keep an eye on him. Chase Brown out of Illinois. He's now going up against another really strong defense after having two amazing weeks in a row. UVA does have a very good defense overall. Granted, I might overrate them more than I should, but I think UVA's defense could be good enough to provide the biggest challenge yet. Will McDonald, Xavier Hutchinson are both facing Iowa and, you know, um, Xavier Hutchinson is going to be facing some really good corners, but uh, coming as a true freshman, I think think his name's like Xavier Nawanka or something like that. Number one safety in the country went to Iowa. So keep your eyes out for that if he starts making some plays, but I definitely want to check him out versus those Iowa state DBs because they train them very, very well. Then you got Will McDonald versus the Iowa O-line. Don't really need to explain that. Iowa always kicks ass with their O-line. But next and finally, this is the big one. I wanted to say the best for last. Yeah, so we'll talk about the Stanford guys first. We'll end off with Will Levis, Anthony Richardson. So Tanner McKee and EJ Smith are going up against USC's defense. Now, here's why it could be an issue. So Tanner McKee has some processing issues here and there. Uh, He obviously doesn't have the most elite weapons. USC has a lot more talent given the fact that they became a huge hotspot in the off season. I'd be concerned, but I think that if Tanner McKee can get over that, then he'll really show that potential to uplift his offense and take him to a whole new level and challenge a team that I said should be in the playoff. Pretty fair. Then you got Caillou Blue Kelly versus Jordan Addison. You know, Caillou is like, he's a damn good corner. But the question is, can you go up against a first round quality receiver like Jordan Addison and lock him down or anybody else for USC? But I forgot to mention EJ Smith here. Obviously, if you know me, like there's I'm not even going to go into it. But EJ Smith is a really good player. If he can be able to take his momentum from last week and actually light up USC's defense, we might start seeing him rise up some boards. Then you got Phil Dracovic here out of Boston College going up against some of the most elite DBs in the country, Virginia Techs. Um, Definitely something that I want to keep my eye on. You know, again, they're very, very good. They produce some very solid players um, that have been able to stick to 53-man rosters, if not get into the first round like Caleb Farley. They just do a very good job. Phil Dracovic, I'm a little bit worried about that. I would also toss in, obviously, Zay Flowers, same, same school. But I think they... That's a definitely a thing to watch. So keep an eye out for that. Now, the last, but certainly not least, possibly the biggest matchup, Will Levis versus Anthony Richardson. You, so Will Levis, dude needs to actually be able to play like a high-end quarterback when it's not scripted. He looked great on the first drive or two in last week's game. Could not do anything similar as the game progressed. And if I'm not mistaken, he had two turnover worthy plays with zero big time throws, legitimately a huge concern. Like he just cannot produce these plays on his own. And he does put the ball in danger. That's not going to be good in the NFL. Anthony Richardson, on the other hand, is he balled that out. 
Like, again, he had his rookie struggles, for sure. This is his freaking second game starting of all time. First one was against the championship Georgia Bulldogs. Give him some slack. Kentucky defense is damn good, but I really want to see these two quarterbacks just see how they duel. Both are really strong-armed. Both are very good athletes, but both have a lot to work on. So I'm excited to see if Florida's defense can take advantage of that. How will Will Levis handle pressure? Same thing with Anthony Richardson. We've seen Anthony Richardson keep his calm and cool on that two-point conversion and just absolutely throw a dime, but will it be enough? Will it be consistent? That's what we need to find out. So let me know what you guys think of this series. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you on the far side. Peace.